A man goes out to his pasture to investigate a strange light. The events to follow would leave not only family and friends scratching their heads, but authorities as well. What exactly happened to that man? Join me as I delve into the Jim Motley case. For Jim Motley, April 10, 1984 started out just a regular day. He worked as a caretaker for a large piece of property in rural Missouri, about three miles between Noel and Southwest City. It was owned by one Burl Harris of Gravette. Motley was charged with keeping an eye on the place and seeing that the cattle were looked after. On that day, when it got late, Motley decided to do some chatting on his CB radio. He did this almost nightly to pass the time. Motley was such a, an enthusiast of CB radios that he actually had one in his pickup truck as well as a large base unit in his home. It was 9.30 in the evening and he was sitting outside in his pickup talking on his CB when he noticed something strange at the back end of the property. From what he could tell, there appeared to be two very large lights shining, much like two large floodlights. The lights looked to be seven or eight feet off the ground and were extremely bright. He promptly exited his vehicle and hobbled into the house. He had sustained a broken foot from an auto accident, so getting around was a chore for him. Upon entering, he told his wife that somebody was out there in the field doing something. He suspected that they were either poaching some of the abundant deer in the hollow, or worse, trying to steal some cattle. Since it was his job to keep an eye on the property, Motley grabbed his rifle and went back to the truck. He drove his pickup out through the wet grass. It had rained most of the week towards the lights which appeared to be shining from a northeasterly direction. The back property line runs east to west and is mostly pasture except for a deep tree filled hollow which cuts through the property north to south. The hollow extends from the back of the property and beyond to the north and almost to the front part of the property in the south. There are two pastures one east of the hollow and one west. To go from the east pasture to the west pasture, one must drive almost to the front of the property, passing right by the house, then back to the west where the hollow is not so steep. There is a back gate on the property and Motley headed towards it, fearing the poachers were entering through the gate of the property. As he neared the gate, about a quarter of a mile from the house, the lights remained stationary and very bright. Motley recalled that they appeared to be coming from a stand of trees not far away. Then everything went blank. When Motley came to, he was disoriented and confused. It seemed like I had vertigo or something. I was dizzy and couldn't keep my head up. I didn't know where I was and was really confused, he told reporter Dan Townsend of the McDonald County Press. Motley claims that he sat for a few seconds trying to regain his composure. He then attempted to start his truck, but it would not start. For two or three more minutes, he fumbled in confusion trying to make sense of things and clear his head. Finally, he got the pickup started but was so disoriented he could not figure out where he was or what to do. He reached for the CB and spoke. I don't know where I am. He repeated the statement, forgetting to use the CB handle, thumb sucker. However, his wife and her friend, Connie Pendergrass, who was visiting, recognized his voice. His wife, Joyce, grabbed the CB. Jim, you're out by the back gate. Again, Motley, his head spinning, said he didn't know where he was. Arnold Spencer of Rural Anderson heard Motley on the CB. Spencer, known as Feet Hauler, quickly jumped on. Thumbsucker, are you lost? he asked. 
Motley repeated himself, insisting that he didn't know where he was. Joyce Motley then told Spencer and the others who were listening in that Motley was out in the pasture. Turn on your lights, Spencer told him. Motley seemed to remember the lights and flicked them on. Joyce noted that she could see his lights, but strangely, he was now in the west pasture, a half a mile west of the back gate. How did you get there? asked Joyce. I don't know, Motley told her. Although Spencer had never personally met Motley, he had talked to him numerous times on the CB, and he noted that Motley sounded scared and confused. It was at this time he felt something was amiss. Maybe Motley was having some kind of medical emergency. He decided to go and head on over to the Motley's farm and see if he could help. He, his father-in-law, Lewis Herring, two brothers-in-law, Robert and Billy Herring, and another CBer identified only as Whipperwool, joined together and all drove to Motley's house. When they arrived, Motley had managed to drive back to the house. He appeared to be less confused than before. Motley noticed that despite his confusion, he had lost 12 minutes somewhere. Before leaving, Spencer was concerned enough to call the Sheriff's Department. Under Sheriff Don Slesman was dispatched to the scene. The five Anderson men listened to Motley's story then drove out to the back gate to check out his story. They suspected that something might have happened to Motley, and whomever did it might still be out there. Upon arriving, Spencer noted that they were careful to check the number of vehicle tracks in the wet pasture. To their surprise, there was only one set, Motley's. I don't care how good a driver you are, Spencer told Townsend. No one can exactly drive over the same tracks. They even felt Motley's head to see if he had been struck and knocked out. He had not, nor had he been drinking. Robert and Billy Herring walked back to the house from the back gate to check if perhaps Motley had driven through the trees in the hollow to reach the west pasture. There were no tracks. If anyone had driven around, it would have been easy to see because the grass was so wet, noted Spencer. After examining the area, Spencer and the others were mystified but convinced Motley had not purposely driven to the other side to perpetuate a tall tale, nor had he driven through the back gate and around to the north side of the hollow. In talking about the incident, Spencer was convinced something very extraordinary happened that night. Deputy Don Schlesman also checked the property and found the same physical evidence as had Spencer and the others. He too was mystified. Joyce was also mystified. For certain, Jim did not drive back by the house to go from one pasture to the other. I would have seen him. As for Motley, he does not know what to say, except that something very strange happened. He told Townsend that he saw nothing more than two bright lights. There was nothing else in the area where the lights were shining from that would indicate anything was there. Since the incident, his truck's alternator ceased to work as has his voltage regulator. I don't know if they just went bad or were a result of that night. All I know is that they don't work anymore. The Jim Motley case is one of those really interesting stories that sort of flew under the radar, but it has all the makings of a classic case. Essentially, he had driven out to a pasture to investigate some strange lights. He blacked out, and when he woke up, 12 minutes had elapsed, and he was confused and in a completely different pasture with nothing to indicate that he had drove there. In fact, the tracks suggest he drove into one field and drove out of another, nothing connecting. To Anderson and the others, it was as if Motley and his vehicle were somehow picked up in one field and dropped off in another. But what could do this? It seems obvious that the lights he observed were somehow connected to his experience. Was Motley and his vehicle taken up into a UFO briefly, only to be returned in the wrong spot? One would think that the visitors would know the area for which he was taken, but maybe their mistake was actually deliberate, 
Maybe they wanted to drop him there. Motley's memory cuts out as he approached the lights, but maybe more happened than he could remember. Maybe he actually saw something else, and maybe he drew his rifle, and maybe their dropping him in the wrong field was their way of letting him know what they were capable of if the situation were to repeat itself. I'm just speculating, but why else would they drop him in the wrong field? In many of the cases featured in David Politis' books, they describe how children are able to somehow travel great distances over very rough terrain in a very short period of time. The Motley case might provide some answers, or at least point researchers in a certain direction. The reason these children are able to travel such vast distances is because something is picking them up and dropping them off. <laughs>